This summer, something that's been a harmless, even a fun fad, has turned dangerous and illegal. Young people using social networks and text messaging to get organized have been assembling in what they call flash mobs. But over the weekend in Germantown, Maryland, a flash mob of more than two dozen young people showed up at a convenience store just before two in the morning. Look at it right there, grabbing things off the shelves and out they go, leaving without paying. We're seeing similar reports in other cities, most involving African Americans and some leading to mob violence. With us now, the Montgomery County, Maryland Police Chief, Jay Thomas Manger, and CNN contributor Roland Martin. Uh, Chief, this is your jurisdiction, Germantown, where this played out. Uh, what do you know about how they got organized? And I've spoken to the Philadelphia Chief, Charles Ramsey, recently. He says they're using texting, using social media. Is that how this happened? Well, we're, that's still under investigation. I, we know that uh, uh, we've gotten some uh, information that some of these kids were at the Montgomery County Fair when it closed, they took the last bus back to the transit center in Germantown. Um, then when they got there, what we're thinking is that that's when they started um, uh, using the social media to get a, a larger group together to go into the 7-Eleven. Right, so you put this video online. You hope it helps you bust these thugs. On the other hand, do you worry at all it would glorify them? Because after an incident in Philadelphia, Google searches for flash mob peaked. And do you worry that other kids might say, oh, see, this is the way to get attention. This is the way to get on television. Well, we're hopeful that the, the reaction that we've gotten from the community uh, quells that. I mean, we have gotten an overwhelming response from the community. In fact, uh, because of the quality of that video, um, we've, we've identified now over half the kids involved in this. And that's from folks who've seen the video and have called us with information. Roland, when you see this, it's obviously abhorrent to watch the conduct like mm -hmm. this. There's other cases of beatings. The Philadelphia mayor, after an incident, a violent incident in his city, went into an African-American church, mm -hmm. and he delivered this lecture. You've damaged yourself. You've damaged another person. You've damaged your peers. And quite honestly, you've damaged your own race. Do you see it as an African-American problem, a youth problem? No, I, mean, I see it as a youth problem. And just like when I see uh, after, after a basketball game or a football game, I'll see white kids on a college campus turning over police cars, setting them on fire. I don't say, oh, my God, what's happening with white college students? I see it as a college student issue. Uh, I think in this case, here you had Mayor Nutter, African-American, speaking in a predominantly African-American church, uh, speaking to the issue. Uh, in that case, you largely had African-Americans. And so he's making a very pointed uh, issue. The problem here, and I do believe this is going to be the problem, that it becomes a copycat syndrome. Because even before Philadelphia, you had the problem in Chicago. Where they were only on the on Michigan Avenue uh, and they had a problem there. And so I think when people all of a sudden see this, they say, hey, it's a great idea. But at the end of the day, parents, community leaders must say, whether they're black or white, these are thugs. This is criminal activity, and it is flat out wrong. And, and Chief, some have suggested, and this has happened in London as well, you have the riots in London, you've had people there say, well, you know, you have high unemployment, you have an age of austerity where people are cutting government services, people have said here in America's cities, there's fewer, less money for summer jobs, fewer opportunities. Uh, you know, the police chief used to be here in D.C., Charles Ramsey, he's up in Philadelphia now. Here's what he said when I asked him, does the economy have something to do with this? These are just ignorant kids that are out there doing things they have absolutely no business doing. Unemployment, education, these are not excuses to just go out and randomly target people and beat them up. There's just absolutely no excuse for it. It's just stupid. It's ignorant. Uh, and I just can't find any other words to describe it. <laughs> well, remember, these kids were, uh, many of them were at the county fair up until till after midnight. So they had something to do. Right. Um, th this is 1.30 in the morning. I mean, it's not like that this w uh, was occurring at, at 7 or 8 o'clock when you think, well, maybe if we had a program, these kids, you know, uh, could get involved in a more healthier activity. This happened at 1.30 in the morning. This so, is the knee-jerk reaction, John, I think is a problem, because what you then do is when you have real cases of poverty, and you need programs, then people say, well, this is part of the issue. It has nothing to do with it. Chief Ramsey was absolutely on it. And so when you, when you have this in your community, uh, you say people are calling in because you have this video up and people are calling in and giving you tips. You've identified half. Have you arrested them or are you waiting, trying to build more evidence and get we're, the rest of the names? We're continuing to build our case. The investigation continues. But the, the, the final outcome is going to be some of these kids are going to be held accountable. Most of these kids are going to be held accountable, um, perhaps in juvenile court, uh, adult court, uh, for, for their behavior. And I think that's where we send the message that we're not going to tolerate this kind of so, activity. So you, you send the message to the children. How old are they? You know, most of the ones we've identified so far are juveniles, so they're under 18 years of age. They're under 18 year, years of age, so Roland, they end up in juvie court. Uh, they may, may, some of them, if they have a record, may have a harsher penalty, but most of them are going to be told, go away and maybe be fined, right? Am I in the ballpark there? Absolutely. And so, and so can you haul their parents in a juvenile court? Well, th their, their parents do have to... Uh, right. uh, 
respond to juvenile court. So there is an opportunity for the judge to, to intervene there if, if there's some action he thinks that can help the family. But John, every parent in Germantown must confront this. This could affect your child potentially getting into college. Right. This could affect your child on down the road. So they might see this as a one-time deal, but it could have lifelong ramifications if they allow this to continue. What's your sense? You see this technological explosion, and it helps you in a case like this because there's surveillance cameras mm -hmm. everywhere. Uh, and so on the one hand, technology is your friend. And the idea that people can start text messaging and it domino effects and the, and the, the kids think it's cool somehow to get involved with this gang, how do, how do you as a as a guy who's trained to you know, fight crime, cops and robbers, deal with that? Well, I think we, we need to, to have the same capability as, as these kids do. And I think that uh, it's going to come down to, you know, when some of these uh, messages go out, that there's going to be enough folks in the community that understand, you know what, I can, I can forward this message to the police. Right. They right. can be there. They can respond quickly.